Heidi Richardson, you are bullish on Japan, and one way you're playing that is through the iShares MSCI Japan ETF, that's the EWJ. It's given back uh, a lot of last year's gains because the yen is strengthened. So what's wrong here? Yeah, well, you know, I think it's a couple. I think Japan looks really attractive. It looks really attractive from a valuation standpoint. If we compare Japan to Europe or to the U.S. marketplace, it's trading at considerable discounts on valuations, on price to earnings, on price to book. If we look at the aggressiveness of the quantitative easing and the stimulus from the Bank of Japan, I think, you know, they're geared for growth this year. All right. Now, a few weeks ago, iShares launched the iShares Adaptive Currency Hedged MSCI Japan ETF. So can you explain this one? Sure. DEWJ is really looking at, uh, it's an index provided by MSCI, and it, it manually uh, adjusts the currency exposure, so whether you should be hedged or unhedged. So for any investors that don't want to have to make that decision of whether they should have hedged exposure to Japan or unhedged exposure to Japan, the adaptive currency portfolio does that for you. So do you suggest a mixing of the two, perhaps? No, I, I think that if you're adding more exposure to Japan, many investors only have hedged exposure to Japan, and we saw that the yen was relatively flat last year. If we think about that, there's a cost and there's a capital gains implication with the hedging component of it. So I would suggest having unhedged exposure this year, but we could see short-term volatility. For those that want to mitigate some of the short-term volatility, I think the adaptive portfolio, DEWJ, is a great portfolio for that. All right, and you're also bullish on the iShares MSCI Germany ETF. Now, one would think that the weaker euro is going to help those exporters in Germany. That said, can Angela Merkel keep the whole uh, political establishment together because they're under a lot of pressure because of the migrant crisis? Yeah, you know, I mean, there are definitely some issues. We've got issues with potential terrorism. We've got issues with the immigration policy. Um, but I think that Germany is really geared for growth. The inflation numbers came out positive today, so they're reflating that system. I think with looking at the lower euro, last year we went from 121 to 109. You know, I think this year it's been relatively flat, but I do see further weakness in the euro. So that's a tailwind to these big exporters like Germany. But as a U.S. dollar investor, you want to make sure you hedge that decline in the currency. And speaking of hedged Europe, you also are bullish on the iShares hedged Eurozone ETF. This is the HEZU. It was up over 7% last year. And is the play here that uh, Mario Draghi, the ECB president, is going to do anything to keep this economy humming? Yeah, so Mario came out a couple of years ago saying they were going to do whatever it takes to get Germany and, and the rest of the Eurozone back on their feet. We've seen some great recovery in the peripherals. If you recall the expression, the pigs, Portugal, Italy, Greece, and Spain, sometimes there was a double I and Ireland was thrown in there. Ireland was one of the best performing single country funds, as an example, last year. And I think even these peripherals are showing signs of improvement. And Draghi is really going to be aggressive. We anticipate further quantitative easing and stimulus measures in Europe this year. So I think that's really going to be a benefit for the Eurozone. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Heidi. My pleasure. And thank you for watching the street.